I have a new girlfriend. I'm going to live here with her, so I'm divorcing you, and you're going to go to your parents. I don't understand what you are saying. I don't need you anymore. I can leave you with my parents if you want to be a breadwinner or a housekeeper. No. You understand? My parents-in-law and my husband laugh at me. They are the worst kind of people, but for me, it's better that way. Then you all need to leave. My name is Noah, and I am a 32-year-old office worker. I have lived my whole life working. After graduating from college, I started working for a major company. For about 10 years, I worked hard and obtained qualifications for promotions. Thanks to that, I am now a department manager at such a young age. I am blessed with a boss who always has something useful to say to me in a group of highly motivated and talented subordinates. I was very fulfilled in my work, but my personal life was not at all fulfilling. I had a boyfriend once when I was a student, but none since I started working worried about my situation. A friend of mine hosted a dinner party for me. That is where I met Matthew. He was kind, had a nice smile, and gave me the impression that he was very personable. And since he was the same age as me, we had a lot in common and it was fun talking to him. We soon became friends, exchanged contact information, and started going out alone together. Then he confessed his feelings for me, and we started going out together. We got along well, and he proposed to me, and we ended up getting married. I was so happy to be married to the man I loved so much, and soon after, I went to his parents' house to greet them. His parents were very kind and welcomed me with open arms. Noah, it's nice to meet you. I can't believe such a beautiful person came to be Matthew's bride. I am so proud of my son for bringing a good woman here. Hey, Mom and Dad, stop it. Noah is getting scared. Oh, my, if you really think so, you can say it. That's right. It's a compliment, so it's okay. His parents were very friendly and easy to talk to, just like him. Noah works for a major company, doesn't she? Oh, no, that's great. It's cool to be a woman who can work hard. Will you quit your job when you get married? No, I'm going to keep working. Well, you've got a good job at a good company, that's better. I was relieved. According to my friends around me, I had heard that their mother-in-law told them to quit the job. They say that they are often told that it is a wife's job to support her husband, so I was glad. I thought to myself that my would-be mother-in-law was generous. After greeting my parents, we were married. My heart was filled with excitement for the new life that was about to begin. My husband moved into the house I was living in, and we started our new married life together. I'm very happy to be newlyweds with my husband, whom I love very much. I'm happy to be able to be at home with him all the time, and I'm also happy to have him home when I come home from work. Six months into our life together, my husband said he had something he wanted to discuss with me. If you don't mind, I'd like you to live with my father and mother. What do you mean, live together? Yes, they are getting old, and I am worried about many things. I see, I can certainly understand how my husband feels. My parents are about the same age as my husband's parents, but my brother and his wife are currently living with them, so I have nothing to worry about. However, my husband is an only child, so it is understandable that he is concerned about his parents. Does this mean we are living with my in-laws? Yes, it would. But do they have a room available for us? They use every room for some reason or another. About that, if you like, I think it would be a good idea to renovate my parents' house and make it a two-family house. Two families. Yes, if we do that, it will be much cheaper than buying a new house. We can live in a beautiful and spacious house while still maintaining our privacy, right? I see, I thought it was indeed an attractive proposal. My in-laws are very kind people, and we won't be together all the time if we live in two houses. It would be less stressful. Yes, that's fine. Really? Thank you. My mom and dad will be so happy. I was happy to see my husband so happy. Later, my in-laws came to visit us, and both of them were very grateful. I even thought that with such a kind and cheerful family, I wouldn't mind not having two households. Soon after that, my husband and I discussed remodeling my in-laws' house. 
The cost would be around $100,000, but as we were discussing it, my husband made a surprising remark. Actually, I have a favor to ask you. Can you pay for the remodeling? What do you mean, the full amount? Why? Then my husband looked very uncomfortable. Actually, we are in debt. What? I was surprised. Neither my husband nor my parents-in-law had ever said anything like that when we were dating or when we got married. I was surprised. How much debt do they have? About $150,000. What? I thought it would be a few tens of thousands of dollars, but I was surprised at the amount of money, and I ended up shouting out loud. It wasn't so bad at first, but it gradually grew, and even if I tried to pay it back, I couldn't. My parents are already living on a pension. I can't pay them back as much as I'd like, and the debt is getting bigger and bigger. I see. I could not hide my surprise and upset at the sudden and shocking revelation. I had no idea that my parents-in-law owed me such a large sum of money. Noah, I need a favor. Will you help me pay off my father and father-in-law's debt? They can't afford it anymore, and I don't make a very good salary either. Then isn't it going to be tough to renovate the house and live together as two families? No, that's important, so let's go ahead as planned. You have asked me to pay for the remodeling and your father's debt. I'm on the hook for a quarter of a million dollars. I know I'm talking about difficult things, but I want to take care of my life with Noah, and I want to protect my mom and dad. It's because I love both my parents and Noah. I'm sorry I'm being greedy, but if you really love me, please help me. I'll pay you back, little by little. I was very distressed. My husband and my in-laws have no one to turn to but me, and I knew that my husband really loved me. But at that time, I was completely deceived by my husband's words. Love is blind, I think, and that is exactly what it is. Okay, I'll pay for it. I agreed to do so. Then my husband said, thank you so much, and he shook my hand and thanked me very much. He told my parents-in-law, and later they came to our house and apologized to me. My mother-in-law even shed tears of joy. I have to do my best from now on. I had to take over my in-law's debt, and I was determined to do it. However, although I had some savings, I was afraid to pay it all at once. So for now, I decided to pay about $330,000 from my savings and then pay the rest in installments. Then my in-laws joined us and we talked about repayment. I explained to my in-laws about the installments I had just made. They said that I could do whatever I wanted with the payment. Then why don't you transfer the money directly to the account for debt repayment? We're not very good at managing money, and I'm a little afraid to transfer a lot of money. When my husband said this, my parents-in-law nodded. Indeed, it would be time-consuming for me to transfer the money to my parents-in-law's account and then for them to transfer it to their repayment account. And since it was a large sum, I would not like it if the money was not transferred in the middle of the process. So I agreed to that. Once the conversation was settled, my parents-in-law looked very relieved. Now we don't have to be afraid of the monthly debt collection. That has been really scary, Dad said. Mom, you should thank Noah properly. Well, I can't tell you how many times I thanked you. I can't thank you enough. Thank you so much. I'm so glad Noah came to be his wife, Mom said. No, no, no. I was happy that my in-laws were happy. However, I felt a little uncomfortable because I thought that they might think of me as a money spinner when they said those last words. I felt a little bad, but I wanted to take care of my beloved husband's family. With that in mind, I began to make payments. And at the same time, we remodeled our house and completed our two-family home. We started living together in a beautiful and spacious house. My parents-in-law were very happy, and my husband's eyes lit up at the new house. I too enjoyed cooking with the new system kitchen, and I was glad to have the remodeling done, and it is more convenient and closer to work here. If commuting time is shortened, that gives me more time to spare. I can also make good use of that free time to study. I was spending my days working hard to pay off my debt. However, there was something that bothered me a little. That is, my husband did not help me pay off the debt at all. 
When I told him about my parents-in-law's debt, he said he would help me pay it off, and yet he has shown absolutely no sign of paying for it out of his own paycheck. When I mentioned this to him before, he told me that his salary was not enough at all to make the payment. I asked my husband what his take-home pay was and asked him to show me his pay stubs, but he stubbornly refused, so I don't know how much he earns, but he has to repay his debts. I worked hard for about a year to pay off the debt. At that time, my parents-in-law asked me how much money I had left to repay. If it's been a year, well, you haven't lost that much. Yeah, at most, you'd be paying back about $10,000 to $155,000, I said. Well, just to give you an idea, we paid back about $30,000 this year, so the remainder is roughly $90,000. When I said this, my parents-in-law were extremely surprised. What? You paid back that much, Noah? That's amazing. At that pace, you will finish paying back the loan in about three years. If I work hard, I'll be able to pay it off. Thank you so much. My parents-in-law were crying and happy. I thought that if my husband's parents were happy like this, it was worth all the hard work. A few days later, however, I encountered an unexpected situation. I had to work overtime that day, so I told my husband I would be home late. However, the work went surprisingly smoothly, and moreover, many of us had free hands, so we were able to leave on time. So I hurried home as usual, thinking I would cook dinner for my husband. But when I opened the front door, there were my parents-in-law's shoes. Oh, my mother-in-law and her family are here, I thought. They must have something to do. So I walked toward the living room. Then I heard my parents-in-law and my husband talking about something. You were right to marry that woman, weren't you, Matthew? You did great. I can't believe you got a woman with that much money. When I heard she works for a big company, I was really cautious and seduced her. You should be more grateful. Oh my, you're one of the people who created that debt. What? But I'm the one with the least. What are you talking about? How much did you spend on horse racing? Your gambling is terrible. I hit a jackpot once in a while, so there were times when we were in the black. How can you be in the black when you owe $150,000? But at this rate, we'll be able to get out of debt and get back on track. That's really great, and she even remodeled our house. I got a really good wife. Well, I'm going to throw her away after she pays off the debt, my husband and parents-in-law laughed. I was so stunned that I couldn't move from the front door for a while. After calming down a little, I made a loud noise as I closed the lock and said, I'm home from the front door. And when I went to the living room, my parents-in-law and husband greeted me with smiles. Oh, Noah, welcome home. Good job, good job. Well, then, we're going back to our room. Let's have dinner together again. I was so afraid of this gentle smile of my parents-in-law because I had heard their earlier conversation. And likewise, this man who is pretending to be a good husband with a smile on his face. I was shocked and wondered what I had been doing to try to pay them back. Didn't you say you had to work late today? Yeah, I've been working a lot more than I expected. So I decided to hurry up and cook dinner and came home on time. Him didn't know that. I tried my best to act calm until dinner so that my husband would not realize what I had done. Then, when my husband was taking a bath, I stayed in my room and cried alone. But crying as hard as I could made me want to give my husband and in-laws a break. I cried as hard as I could. From then on, I acted quickly. I began to prepare for the divorce and then steadily made plans for what to do after the divorce. About three months passed, I pretended to be happy and told my husband that I had paid off my parents-in-law's debt. My husband rolled his eyes. What? You paid off the debt? That $150,000. That was supposed to take roughly three years, right? Actually, I have quite a bit of money saved up, but I was afraid to pay it off all at once. So I started taking out a little bit from my salary and savings, but we were already below $100,000, and I thought it would be better to pay it all off at once. I see. And then I asked, 
Do you mind if I check and ask to see my bank book? I showed my husband the bank book. Oh, it's true. $90,000 was paid all at once. My husband tried to contain his excitement as much as possible, but I could see that he was itching to get out of there. Wow, Noah, thank you. My dads are going to love this. My husband put his hands on his face and seemed to be crying, but I knew it was just an act and he was pretending to cry. Soon after that, my parents-in-law also came and thanked me. Thank you so much. I'm so glad I met Noah. You're like God. If I had not known any of this, I would have surely been happy to be along for the ride, having been deceived. But I already know what these people are really like, and I only acted because I was ready for my plan. A few days later, my husband asked to speak with me. My husband looked very serious. What on earth? I'm sorry, Noah, but you have to leave me. What? What do you mean? I have a new girlfriend. What? I'm going to live here with her. So I'm divorcing you and you're going to my parents' place. I was really taken aback by Matthew's unexpected statement. I knew from eavesdropping on our earlier conversation that my husband would leave me when he finished paying his debts. However, I did not expect him to openly declare his infidelity. And what did he mean by having me go to his in-laws after he left me? Um, I don't really understand what you mean. When I said this, my husband's mood turned sour, saying, You're not very understanding at all. I don't need you anymore, but as a breadwinner or a housekeeper, I can keep you here. Oh, no. Then the front door opened and my in-laws came in. Matthew, did you finally tell her? Yeah, I told her I wish I could have been there for that moment. No, that's how it is. You can come to our house if you do the chores for us. Of course, we'll charge you rent, though. My parents-in-law and my husband laugh at me. They are the worst people ever, but that's more than I can say for me. Then all of you need to leave. My in-laws rolled their eyes at my comment. What are you talking about? Have you forgotten I can easily pay for the renovation myself? You changed the name of the house to mine. That's why I have the rights to this house. I can decide who to let live in the house and who be kick out. The faces of my in-laws turned blue at my comment. Then they finally remembered the title of the house. I was really dumbfounded. I'm sorry, but you can't live here anymore. If we get divorced, you'll be strangers. Oh no, my in-laws realized the gravity of the situation. But my husband, not wanting to be outdone by me, retorted, but you took over our debt and paid it in full. You're the one who's losing money. If we had no debt, we could at least afford a new place to live. That's true. Thank you for letting us live in a nice house while you pay our debts. My in-laws and husband said as much. So I told them a fact. I'm sorry, but I didn't pay off the rest of the $90,000 debt. What? No, but you had money missing from your bank book. That was just a separate account that I created and moved around. So the debt hasn't changed from $90,000. I just haven't had the collections come yet because I've been paying large sums of money continuously, but I think it's time for them to come. So you are responsible for paying the rest. My husband and in-laws went pale. Then I shot them a warning. Matthew, you told me you were having an affair, so you should pay the alimony. I'll charge your partner for the affair, too. Oh, no, she went out with me even though she's beautiful because I own a house and have money. If they charge me alimony, she'll dump me. I don't care anything about that. Noah, I have. I apologize. Please don't leave us. My husband is afraid of being dumped by the adulterer, and my in-laws are afraid of being dumped by me. They are truly selfish and scum parents and children in every way. I will have nothing to do with you people anymore, no matter what you say. I have also put this house on the market. I will also have you pay your debt of $60,000 that I paid on your behalf through my lawyer. Oh no, the in-laws froze, stunned by the loss of everything they had. I then demanded a divorce and alimony from my husband through my lawyer. I also demanded alimony from the adulterer. I demanded $6,000 from my in-laws for what I had paid them. 
Actually, that renovated in-law house sold for about $200,000. It was in a good location, and there was a family that was just looking for a duplex, so we got a good price. They were able to buy it, so I had to pay $160,000, which included the $60,000 I owed on the debt and $100,000 for the renovation. I had paid $160,000, but gained $40,000 as a result. In addition, I also get alimony from my ex-husband and the affair partner, which is a very positive situation. On top of that, I was able to get a small payment of $60,000 from my ex-parents-in-law. I am the one who is getting the most out of this situation. I think this is a reasonable request because the damage I have suffered was so bad that I distrusted people. As for me having that much savings to begin with, I was trying to learn how to invest so that I could pay off my in-laws' debts as quickly as possible, and since I had quite a lot of savings to begin with, I put a few tens of thousands of dollars or so into investments. I found that my assets had grown quite a bit in about a year, plus I had gotten a raise, so I was getting paid quite well. So I was able to take such a drastic step because I had saved a lot of money. I was the biggest beneficiary and my former in-laws were back in debt and they lost their house. To be honest, I think they deserved it because they cheated me like fraud. People like that should go to hell. For once, I should reflect on what happened to me this time and develop a better eye for people. From now on, I will also continue to save and increase my assets so that I can live a luxurious life in my old age, and I want to make many happy memories with people I can truly trust. What did you think of this story? And please subscribe to our channel.